Hi, I'm Jennifer Kirkey. It's another in my series of videos for my physics classes at Douglas College, particularly for my engineering statics course, Phys 1170, but this is appropriate for about any first year physics course. An object is in equilibrium, but it's in two dimensions. Now, in reality, we're talking about a beam here. There's, going, there's a hinge at A, so it can move easily, but it's being held in place by a couple of ropes. But because it's a long, skinny beam, is we can treat it as two dimensions. We don't care about that third dimension. Yes, we're simplifying the model, but that's what we do a lot in physics. So that's why this is called two-dimensional equilibrium. What's important is going to be in equilibrium with forces. So the forces in this direction have to be zero. But it also has to be in equilibrium this way. Remember, if they say it's easy to have a net force zero, but you're still causing a rotation. Now, in engineering, we tend to usually talk about moments. In physics, we tend to talk about torques. I'm going to analyze this such that the moments, the rotations say that, uh, that cause the, the moments or torques that cause rotation are zero and the forces are zero. Let's take a look at the picture. Here's what we're talking about. So we have a beam. Notice A, there's a hinge at A. And of course, this is physics. The beam is massless. The hinge at A is frictionless. And the pulley at D is frictionless. Right, so first approximation. But you got a hinge. So it can cause forces in both the horizontal and vertical directions. You've got a rope that's joined at B and halfway in between B and C. It's, the, it's, it's one rope, so the tension force has the same magnitude, but where it is joined, say notice the, the one that's beyond B, it's at a certain angle. And we're using the step, the one, two triangle to show you, to indicate what, what the, the components are. And then of course at the very end, hanging at point C, is you've got a cylinder of a certain weight. In this case, I think it's 80 pounds. There we go, we're dealing with 80 pounds. But say, notice the distance for the moments, right? So the hinge at A, A is going to be our rotation point. So B is five feet away. The second bit of the tension is 10 feet from A, and the cylinder is 13 feet. So you're gonna want that picture in your head. We're gonna make the picture go away, because what you really need is a good force diagram. I started sketching because it saves time. But you've got, say, your beam, the hinge at A. They said what's important, it's a hinge, so you have them in two dimensions. So should have been clear, say we're making this positive X, and that's going to be positive Y. Your tension force, say, is up, say your tension is at an angle, and your weight is down, and you know all of those values. Oh, sorry, that was all over the upper line. I have to push through it. That was five feet, that was five feet, that was three feet. This distance is 13 feet. Now when it comes to components, a fast review, say if, if, if you don't kind of remember, it's been a while since you've done this, you saw on the diagram this was one and two. So what that means, so this triangle, one, two, well you can do a hypotenuse, you know, this square plus that square. Well that's, you know, one square plus two square is five. You can do that math. But say what that means is in terms of this component is that this way, so you've got your tension force, this component is one over the square root of five, while this component is two over the square root of five times f of t. That's what this means. One divided by the square root of five, two divided by the square root of five. Now, if you want to calculate this angle, it's 60-ish, Okay, and do the, you know, FT cosine of that angle, FT sine of the angle, go for it, right? So that'll work just fine, but you don't need to. So we've done the math for you, and this is a standard engineering notation in terms of finding the angles. Because what we need, right, is we need to do all of the values, right? Now, Everything's about point A. If you want to say consider that, say point O. Okay, say about that. And we're choosing that because in the sum of the moments, say we don't know either of those values. Say we know that the total ups component equals the total down. Say and this way goes that way, but like that's just way too many unknowns. We gotta gotta simplify. So the trick is is we take say our 
moment asks you to origin say to be there see those don't cause a moment hey we have well we have three forces two of them have the same magnitude so let's start off with the moment it doesn't matter when you're writing this down if you're starting off with um, with forces say or adding up the moments for good historical reasons is we tend to start off with the moments because they tend to be simpler the sum of the moments are at a is zero this thing is in equilibrium it's just hanging out there it's not moving so that tells us this moment is positive say about that point we'll say right hand rule all right so we have my tension force times five feet this moment is also positive but it's not ft times 10 it is the two over square root of five times 10. Okay. So five plus five feet. So they're both positive and that one is negative. Darn, if I'd written a little bit smaller, I might be able to say, say minus the weight, whatever your weight is, your gravity force times 13 equals zero. Ah. <laughs> so I went off screen. Want the zero at the other end, all right? Let's say Ft times 5, this component times 10, because that's your moment arm, the perpendicular, the, the, the axes, the perpendicular distance to that component, and say Ft down 13. Yay! I'm going to put my bracket in especially for 10. All right. So two unknowns. All right. Two unknowns, not bad. We can probably deal with that one. Now, we're making this direction positive x. And so this is, so A of X, that's definitely positive. All right. Well, those are in the Y direction. So this is negative, this component. So it should say A of X line equals A of X minus the component that way is 1 over square root of 5 F of T equals 0. So that's in the, oh, I should have made that clear. That's going to be the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. Well, and then let's do the y directions. The sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. One up, one up, one component up, one component down. So positive, 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 negative. So we end up with, so A of y is positive plus whatever our tension force is plus 2 over square root of 5, whatever our tension force is, minus, all right, say minus our, uh, um, minus our weight force, say, okay, the 80 pounds, we know that number, all right, say that equals 0. All right. So there we have it. We have three equations and we have three unknowns. Now, Say what, and I think I forgot to write down here, so I'll add this. So it's, you can't solve this as is, is you need to know what the number is. And I neglected, say, to write that down. So if you start off by knowing, if I give you that your weight force is 80 pounds, right? Well, then out it comes. If you know W, you can find your tension force. If you know your tension force, you can find A of X. If you know your tension force in W, you can find A of Y. So take it by knowing this one number, and of course all of those distances, all of those angles, out comes your values. So you end up with that your tension force, I'll put it all in one row. What's important is you need to know what the weight force is, but because W is 80, that gives you your tension force is 74.6 pounds. Should have written a little bit smaller, should have room for it. All right. Say A of X, your reaction force at X is 33.4 pounds, and your A of Y is 61.3 pounds. Okay, that's the 61.3. So it's a lovely example of something that looks fairly complicated, 
but you set up the equations. So if I tell you one of those values, say I deliberately stuck with, I, I left W as a variable deliberately, say to show you that as soon as you know one of the stuff, either W or F of T is you can solve. Say in this example, I asked for W, have you find F of T? Well, often in engineering, um, it's easy to add more weight. How good is your rope is the question. So if you have a maximum value for your rope for your cable before it breaks, well, that's going to tell you what your maximum weight is. So it's nice often to stick with the symbols that only at the end put the values in. But say, you can do it. So to end, let's bring that picture back one more time. One last time, all right? And so, so take a look at that, all right? So remember, the question was, given the weight, 80 pounds of the cylinder, I love the fact the way the, by the artist, I was the CCBY, the open source, has positioned that exactly, say, on top of the logo. That wasn't a coincidence. She's very good. Um, is, say, the question was, what was the reaction force at A, the pin at A, say, the hinge at A, given that you knew the weight of the cylinder? And so what's key is that the rope, it's a frictionless pulley, so that your tension force is the same, say, at B and to that contact point. So that angle, that 1 divided by 2, is important. When I give you a question like this in my, on, I'd say in my quizzes, say online and on the test, is I had the artist, so I've got a 1, 2, I've got a 3, 4, I've got a 5, 12. So it's very, very easy to change that angle. Once in say engineering, say, yeah, where exactly that is located, that's how you design the beam. But the main thing is, given this relatively simple but important, so you're going to hang stuff like this all of the time, um, is that you can analyze and get the values. I know you can do it.